Greetings, Japan fans. In today's show, we're going to look at some aspects of stress. Very, very important subject at the moment. Maishu, arigatouzaimasu, and welcome back to the Leadership Japan series. I'm your host in Tokyo, Dr. Greg Story, your corporate coach and training guy, the president of Dale Kani Training Japan and the best-selling author of Japan Sales Mastery, Japan Business Mastery. We are broadcasting around the world from Minato-ku in the center of Tokyo, the leadership capital of Japan. Well, these podcasts are designed to help you leading during this COVID-19 crisis. If you have feedback on the show, your preferences about potential topics, then let us know. Don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, and share this podcast. We have other podcasts Mondays, the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show, Tuesday, the Presentation Japan Series, Wednesdays, the Sale Japan Series, Thursdays, this one, the Leadership Japan Series, and Fridays, the Japan Business Mastery Show. Before we get going, today's handy Japanese phrase is. Dareto. Now, this means. Who with? Okay, who with? It's a very informal, very informal expression. You would never use this with a client. It's only if you use very close friends. You'd say, Daddy Dog. Say, for example, they went out to dinner,、uh, had a date or something, you might say, Daddy Dog. Or they went away for the weekend somewhere, Daddy Dog. Or they went overseas on a trip, Daddy Dog. Who did you go with? Dareto, 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 Dareto. Very informal. Make sure you're very careful how you use this one. Ask people who they did something with, you just say, Dareto, Dareto, Dareto. This is episode number 357, 357. And today we are talking about stress leaders. Must lead their people through this stress. Watching your business implode is stressful. Losing access to good staff through furloughs, firing loyal people through brutal necessity, bum rushing suppliers by not paying them, seeing your clients cancel orders, smelling. Burning cash reserves are all hurtful and hit hard. You didn't sign up for this meltdown, but it is upon you anyway. You're under immense stress, and so are your people. How are you dealing with your team in this environment? I was watching a video of an American sales guru talking about how to lead your team in lockdown. He had already fired one third of his own team and had some harsh advice on how to inspire the survivors of the first wave of cuts. Those working from home had to be ridden hard to make sure they performed. If people couldn't match their number targets, they needed to be fired immediately. Whenever there has been a recession, companies fire people, and those remaining fear they are next. Every working day until the axe falls or things recover. All of that fine rhetoric about our people are our most valuable resource is shown to be the hot air it always was. This is what people remember, and it impacts their levels of engagement with the firm when things finally get back to normality. So, where do we strike the balance between having to get the work out and being empathetic to our team members? In these various online meetings that I attend to try and get ideas on how to survive this COVID 19 disruption in my business, I occasionally get a glimpse into the speaker's abode. Often, these expat leaders are living in apartments where the living room is bigger. Than the entire apartment of their employees' families. Their staff are at home trying to work, surrounded by the kids going crazy from being cooped up all day and night. Knowing that, would you adjust 
your expectations on how much productivity you can expect. As a leader, are you giving any guidance to your team on how to deal with their stress? Are you doing anything to work on how to deal with your own stress? We've been running our series of free stress management live online sessions in both Japanese and English. Our sessions are not your bog-standard lecture with slide deck and talking head affair. These are highly interactive sessions where people go to virtual rooms to discuss with others about the issues under consideration. They are called upon to share the discussion outcomes and engage with the instructors. The post-session survey comments often mention that the attendees were really happy to speak to someone and share. Living by themselves, they can go many hours without speaking to anyone, and the loneliness is a factor for them. They note they are happy to hear. They are not the only one under pressure, and they get ideas from their instructors and each other on ways to deal with their stress. We poll them during the live online session on which of the 10 Dale County stress management principles covered really resonate with them. I won't cover all of them now, but a lot of people focus on principles like keep busy, cooperate with the inevitable, count your blessings, not your troubles. These come from the book How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. They're all very simple ideas, but actually highly effective. Find out more when we come back from the break. Today's show is brought to you by our online public courses, but we also do online custom in-house programs. We do these in Japanese and English. Our sponsors for today's show are our online programs, May 1st, Adjust to Change, May 15, Build Trust, Credibility and Respect, May 21, Motivation and Leadership, and May 27th, Managing Conflict in the Workplace. Now, our website is also full of resources, so you can check that out at enjapan.dalecarnegie.com. You can email me, greg.story at dalecarnegie.com. If you like learning by watching videos, we've got over 960 at Japan Dale Carnegie TV on YouTube. And we're releasing two TV shows every week on YouTube, The Cutting Edge Japan Business Show, that's a premier business show in Japan. Comes out every Monday, Tokyo time. And Fridays, we have the Japan Business Mastery Show. Don't forget, get my book, Japan Sales Mastery and Japan Business Mastery from Amazon. Welcome back. Going from being busy in the office to suddenly being on your own at home can make your routine disappear and leave you feeling lost. The workflow is now different and things don't work as smoothly, so you're left with downtime which you are unused to having. It makes you feel lost, nervous, guilty. You have to find things which will keep you busy and make the day fly by. Also, stop working 16 hours a day like before and work a normal 8-hour day instead. That will help productivity by getting the work done in 8 hours because you're working in a more concentrated fashion. The boss needs to help everyone develop work routines for remote work to replace what they've done before. Cooperating with the inevitable means... Focusing on what you can control instead of stressing yourself and worrying about things you cannot control. COVID-19 is out of your span of influence, with the exception of staying at home and reducing the contagion effects. So, ignore the hourly updates of the media and focus instead on things which make you feel stronger and better. Bosses can direct the team to spend time studying about the industry watching videos and reading books, etc., which will educate them further in their profession. Knowing how many cases of COVID-19 occur each day really energizes the media, 
but ultimately means nothing to anyone. Stress is not 100% negative, and life is not 100% negative either. There are some positives. We just have to look for them and then count them to get the balance back to some form of equilibrium. When having a morning huddle online at 9am, make sure it gets started with people sharing some good news. Staff may need some encouragement to find some good news, but once the ball gets rolling, they will find. There are aspects of positivity out there. It works. It does lift the team's spirits and outlook. Live in daytight compartments is another favourite. This means to block out yesterday's worries and also not worry about what is coming tomorrow. We need to concentrate on today, one day at a time. It doesn't mean we don't plan for tomorrow. We just don't let tomorrow's worries impede us from focusing on what we need to do today. This is a mental trick. We play on ourselves to get more productive work done in less time. Adjusting expectations of ourselves and our team members in these COVID-19 times is the first step the leader must take. Looking at the mental health of the team and understanding their personal work at home circumstances assist in that regard. Using proven stress management principles saves a lot of time trying to work it out yourself. Embrace Principle 17 from Dale Carnegie's 30 Human Relations Principles. Try honestly to see things from the other person's point of view. Doing that will be noticed by the team and their full engagement will follow. Thank you for joining the Leadership Japan series. If you found the program useful, then please tell your family, friends and colleagues. Don't forget to rate, review, subscribe and share this podcast. You can contact me at greg.story at dalecunny.com Check out all the good stuff on our website, enjapan.dalecanoe.com. Well, stay safe. This virus, we've got 80% ratio of not knowing where it came from, from the cases that are being revealed every day. That means it's highly contagious and out of control. That means staying at home, Staying safe, observing the rules, becomes critical. It's painful, but it's short-term pain for long-term gain. We will never get back to normality until the last country gets this virus under control. Please. Take good care of your health. Isolate yourself from others who could give you the virus. And come back next week and listen to more good information from Japan's Leadership Series. (music) 